Phillips, Milk of Magnesia, and Bayer Aspirin bring you Mystery Theater, transcribed, and Inspector Mark Saber of the Homicide Squad. Homicide, Inspector Saber speaking. Hello, Mark. How's it going? Fine. Who's this? Hi, Magner. Well, what's on your mind, Miss Magner? A client of mine has been murdered. Which one? DeWitt Paul. An actor? No, a painter. One of the most promising little artists... What's the ever... address, Mr. Magner? The Mankiewicz Building, Sunset Strip, right across from the Calypso Club. Stay right there, Mr. Magner, and don't touch anything. We'll be there in a few minutes. The Case of the Portrait in Red. Countless people have discovered that when they feel logy and out of sorts because they need a laxative, the thing to take is Phillips Milk of Magnesia. For wonderfully effective Phillips, which is gentle enough for children and thorough enough for grown-ups, has for 75 years been the best laxative money can buy. When you use it, you'll find that Milk of Magnesia provides better relief, more complete relief than laxatives which just act on irregularity alone. This is because Milk of Magnesia is actually more than a laxative. It also relieves any accompanying acid indigestion. Furthermore, Philip's Milk of Magnesia works leisurely. Three tablespoonfuls with water taken at bedtime when necessary will work without embarrassing urgency. And by morning, Philip should bring you such thorough relief, such effective relief, you'll be able to start the new day feeling fresh as a daisy. So get Phillips tomorrow. The 25-cent size, the 50-cent size, or the economical family size. And when you buy, make sure you ask for it by name. Phillips Milk of Magnesia, the best laxative money can buy. This is it, Sim. Mm. Flashy looking affair. Don't look much like an artist studio, does it? Well, we're west of La Cienega, Tim, where everything looks like something else. Mm. Except murder. So, oh, what if they do fire you? I can always get your contract and video pictures for five weeks. But, sweetheart. Baby! Angel! Now, oh, honey, listen to me. Look, Luscious, we'll have lunch. So what if you lose it? Okay. Yeah, what can I do for you? Is your name High Magna? Right. Did you phone in a report on a homicide? Hey, you're Mark Saber. Right this way, Mark. In here. <laughs> Some gag, eh, Inspector? Yes, those look like stab wounds. Mm. He's dead, all right. And has been for some time. Well, cover it up, Tim. It looks as if the late Mr. DeWitt Paul wasn't the only victim of the stabbing. How's that? Well, somebody also took a knife to these paintings on the wall. The final knife in my back. I could cry. You don't know the dough these dolls owed us for this stuff. Who exactly are these dolls? Just about every doll in pictures with a six-figure salary. No, I take it Mr. Paul specialized in portraits of movie stars. Right. Did you ever see any of his other paintings? There aren't any others, worse luck. This is the crop. I see. Uh, take Mr. Magner in the other room, Tim, and get a statement from him. Oh, and call the medic. Find out what's holding them up. I'm going to have a closer look at what's left of the late Mr. Paul's paintings. All right. Come along now. Thank you. Don't easy. make any false Wait moves a minute. if you know what's good for Watch you. Watch you shut it around or I'll fix it so you'll ever work in this town again. Who's there? Open up. I know you're in there. Okay, where is she? Who? Don't horse around with me. I know she's in here. The car's in the driveway. Who are you? Ask that phony DeWitt Paul. 
Well, I'm afraid I can't very well do that. Oh, you can't, can't you? Well, I'm going to ask him a few questions out of my way. Now, take it easy. I'm warning you. Well, I'm sorry I had to do that. Yeah, let me help you up. That's a mean wall up in that left of yours, mister. What's your pitch? Inspector Saber, homicide. Homicide? Hey, where is Pam? He's not... No, it's your friend, DeWitt Paul. He's been murdered. Good. Somebody saved me the trouble. But listen, i got to get Pam out of here. A thing like this will wreck her career. Pam! Pam, where are hey, you? Wait a minute. Come back here. I bet she's in the closet. <laughs> Harry, you fool. Oh, you fool. Why did you... Shut up. Talk? Come on out of there. I'm not going to hurt you. Go on over there and sit down. You too, miss. Do I have to stay here? Can't you question us somewhere else? No, I'm sorry. You're both under technical arrest. You can't leave the premises. Well, I guess that settles that. Inspector, I'm sorry. I can't get a consecutive word out of this joker. Nuts. Did you check the medic? Yes, the morgue wagon's out. Can't get, get here for another half hour. And the examiner has to come all the way from Pasadena. Hi, can't you get me a lawyer or something? I need one myself. What's the big idea coming back here, Pam? I told you to stay far away from here. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Harvard. I, I had to risk it. I, I, I was afraid I'd left my key. Well, you should have thrown away the key to this dump before you ever came here. Oh, Harry, now, darling, you mustn't be cruel to me. Now that do it. Deb, you'll all have to... Oh, well, of course. Oh, keep your temper, Harry. Keep your temper. Well, all right, quiet. You're all going to have a chance to talk one at a time. Now, you first. Yeah. Name? Professional or legal? Both. My professional name is Pamela Storrs. S-T-O-R-R-S. In private life, I'm Mrs. Harry Fleming. <laughs> That's a laugh. Oh, I take it you are Mr. Fleming. Harry, darling. Occupation? Mark, you're kidding, aren't you? This doll is the hottest British movie import since Greer Garson. I see. Profession actress. Now, you're getting all this, Tim? Yeah, sure. I got it here. This is Harry Fleming, alias Pamela Storrs. Alias? Miss Storrs, were you acquainted with the deceased? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dewitt Paul was a very dear friend of mine. Yeah. Dear friend. Oh. What was the purpose of your visit here this evening, Miss Storrs? Mr. Paul had painted a portrait of me, and he wanted to borrow it for his exhibition. I came in to ask him to fetch it out of the car, and I, I, I found it. Where is that picture now? It, it's in the station wagon, parked in the area way. Yeah, Jim, uh, go and get that painting out of the car. All right. Keep an eye on them screwballs, Inspector. I don't trust them. Mark, uh, I wish you'd think this thing over. We could still make a deal. Oh? What kind of a deal? Well, what's it matter? A deal's a deal, ain't it? So it's a deal. What kind of dough does the city pay you? Come to the point. Okay, here's your theme. Pamela's studio has got a million bucks invested in it. She gets in a jam, and along comes a city detective working for peanuts. It's no deal, Magna. Okay, so you're smart. You want to write your own script? Go ahead, see how far you get. Here's that picture, Mark. Where do you want it? Oh, right here under the light, Tim. Uh, uh, that's curious. Magna. Yeah? You say that Mr. Paul never painted anything but these commercial portraits. Not that I know of. Why? Well, I can't tell from this one painting, but I have the feeling this man has done a different kind of work. You don't mean he's good. Well, he could have been great. What did I tell you? Greatest little painter that ever... All right, that's probably the medic, Tim. I'll let him in. Now, take these people in the other room. They'll want this room clear. Good evening. I wish to see Mr. Paul. Come in. Your name, please? I'm Adrian Montague, sir. Montague Galleries, New York, London, Paris. I believe Mr. Paul's well acquainted with me. How well acquainted are you with Mr. Paul? Oh, really? Must I submit to a questionnaire? I'm afraid you must, Mr. Montague. I'm Inspector Sabre of Homicide. Oh, well, I'm too late. I hope that I can arrive here in time to prevent her doing anything rash. Who is that, Mr. Montague? Why, Dorothy Dorothy, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I should explain. Paul deserted his wife in New York about a year ago, and she only recently learned his whereabouts. She became hysterical. Unhinged, in fact. Spoke of suicide, murder. 
His poor friend and patron, I felt it was my duty to follow her here and warn him. Well, you see, I'm too late. Now, Mr. Montague, this is not going to be pleasant, but I have to ask you to identify the body. That last form of here, where is this poor fellow? This way. Ah, uh, quel dommage. Yes, Inspector, that was Paul Linden. Linden? Yes, that was his real name. Fine talent. How did Mrs. Linden learn of his whereabouts? He threw a photograph from one of the New York tabloids. I have the clipping right here in my pocket. Oh. Oh, Huh. Artist KO'd by jealous mate of Star, cameraman Harry Fleming, husband of Pamela Stores, is restrained by waiters as he stands over prostrate form of filmland artist DeWitt Paul. Oh, huh? Well, I wonder how they kept this out of the Los Angeles papers. That, I presume, is a rhetorical question, sir. The great Scott, Inspector. What's wrong? That portrait. Who is this woman, Inspector? Well, that's the lady mentioned in your clipping, Pamela Stores. So that's the connection. I've seen this woman in the flesh, Inspector. Where? In New York. I saw her getting into a taxi cab with Paul the day he disappeared. Where is she now? Come along, Mr. Montague. I want you to meet her. She's just in the next room. All right, relax, Tim. You'll burst a blood vessel. I tell you, if I don't get out of this circus pretty soon, I'll be battier than a lot of them. All right, be patient, Tim. I think we're beginning to make some progress. Mr. Montague, this is my assistant, Sergeant Maloney. How do you do? Mr. Montague has identified DeWitt Paul's body. It seems that his real name is Paul Lendon, and that he was in a nightclub brawl with you only last week, Mr. Fleming. So what? Well, it says here you threatened his life. Don't commit yourself, Harry. Don't commit yourself. Well, you can check my time card at the studio. I was riding a camera there from 9 to 7.30 on stage 24. Miss Stores? Yes, Inspector. Will you step over here in the light? I want Mr. Montague to have a good look at you. Yes, Inspector, this is definitely the woman. Now listen, Pam, don't say a word or we get in touch with Greg. We need a lawyer. Magna, you need a sedative. Now look here, Miss Stars. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We are only trying to get at the truth. Why didn't you tell me you knew DeWitt Paul was Paul Linden? It never occurred to me. I mean, it never entered my mind. It, it, it's all been such a frightful shock. Well, now that it has entered your mind, Miss Stores, suppose you tell us all about it. Inspector, I I do so very much want to help. Watch it, Pamela. It's all it's all so very likely to be misunderstood. I I, I do wish I could speak to you about it. Alone. Why, of course. Oh no, not in there. In into its office. Just just through here. Ah, oh, what a relief to be away from those savages. I feel so safe with you. Uh, is it Mark? Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, Miss Stores, about this, uh, uh, look, wouldn't you be more comfortable in a chair? Oh, thank you, no. No, it rests my feet somehow to sit here on the desk. Makes me feel so deliciously free. Uh, uh, Miss Stores, when did you first meet Paul Linden? Uh, last fall. It was uh, it was at the opening of the Matisse show at the Modern Museum. So you and Paul struck up a conversation, and he just happened to have some of his sketches with him. Yes. yes. And what exactly happened between the time you met Paul Linden in New York and the time he showed up here in Hollywood as a commercial portrait painter named DeWitt Paul? Well, when Paul told me how that dreadful Mr. Montague had forced him to sign a perfectly frightful contract so that everything he painted belonged to Mr. Montague and how Mr. Montague gave him barely enough to live on, well, I I wanted to help him, Mark. Surely you can 
understand that. So you brought him back to Hollywood, introduced him to all your friends, and set him up in business. Hmm. Yes, and I might have known people would misunderstand, especially my husband. Now, Harry's the best cameraman I ever had, and I suppose I shouldn't say this, but he is so unfeeling at times. Uh, yes, well, uh, Miss Stores, this seems to just about cover the ground. Thanks for your cooperation. Oh, you mean you're, you're letting me go? Yes, but I'll have to ask you not to leave town. I have no reason to, Mark. Yes. Uh, well, uh, well sh- shall we go back? Mark, to... Mark, I don't want to go back to that great gloomy house tonight with him. Tell me what I should do, Mark. Now, Pamela, you're a big girl. You must decide these things for yourself. Oh, but I thought... I, I mean, I was so sure... Oh, Oh, hi, Jake. Uh, why, it's perfectly all right, Tim. What is it? Well, the medic arrived. They've photographed the scene and they've taken it away. I'm releasing Miss Stores, but I want to talk to the others downtown. Now, get that, Tim. Maloney. Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, I got it okay. okay. What's up, Tim? Somebody just phoned in a report from Paul's home out in Laurel Canyon. Seems a woman was found stabbed to death. Who was she? Dorothy Linden. Paul's wife. If you suffer with ordinary headaches, remember this about genuine Bayer aspirin. You needn't accept anybody's word for its quick-acting properties. For your own eyes will show you one reason why Bayer Aspirin means fast relief. Simply drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch how quickly it acts. You'll see it start to disintegrate before it reaches the bottom of the glass. And that's what it does in your stomach. It begins to disintegrate almost instantly. This amazingly fast disintegrating action is one reason, a reason you can actually see Why Bayer Aspirin Tablets give you relief with astonishing speed. Keep this in mind the next time you have a headache and want fast relief. And remember, too, that Bayer Aspirin also means dependable relief. No other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. When you buy, ask for it by name. Bayer Aspirin. Not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle, and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Hey, easy on those curves, Tim. You're drunk with power tonight. Uh, It's these new low-pressure tires, Mark. Uh Uh-oh, there's the medic's car. Ah, good. Pull in behind it, Tim. You, Inspector? Yes, where are you? The house is up here, top of the stairs. Hello, Mark. Tim, I thought you boys would never get here. Well, our citizens out in this neck of the woods get murdered faster than we can keep up with them. I don't think this is murder, Inspector. I think this is suicide. Oh, excuse me. This is Mrs. Dowd, Paul's landlady. You found the body, Mrs. Dowd? Yes. And suicide is just what was on her mind. She said he deserted her, and if he didn't do the right thing by her, she was going to kill him and herself to boot. Well, let's have a look at the scene. If it's uh, all the same to you, I'd rather not go back in there. Oh, yes, yes, I quite understand. Now, just one more question, Mrs. Dodd. Did you see anyone approach the house after you admitted Paul's wife? Yes, the car drove up about 10 o'clock. It was too dark to see who it was, but I thought it must be Mr. Paul coming home from his studio. There was yelling and screaming and quarreling, and he slammed out and drove off again. Why did you come back to the house? Well, after the way she was carrying on about killing herself and all, I thought I'd better go up and see if I could calm her down. But I was too late. She'd already did the deed. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Dowd. You've been most helpful. Well, I'll be in my own house next door if you want anything. So long, Anthony. Well, let's get on with this. Right in here. That's it. Yeah. 
stabbed through the heart. Did you find any more wounds? That's all. The knife was still in her. I had a little trouble. I'm afraid I may have smudged those prints, but it's a clear enough case of murder and suicide. Paul was stabbed numerous times in the back, and I'm sure autopsy will show this is the same weapon. <laughs> well, I, I'm surprised at you, Doctor. If Mrs. Dow was telling the truth, this woman couldn't possibly have killed her husband and then committed suicide. Because Mrs. Dowd phoned Paul after his wife arrived here, and Paul said it was all right to let her in. Yeah. Might not have been Paul who answered the phone. Well, it definitely couldn't have been Paul who arrived here at 10 o'clock because he was cold when we got to him. Seems to me you're putting a lot of credence in that old woman's story. <laughs> Touche. What did you find in the other rooms? There's only one sort of a storeroom, a lot of old picture frames and stuff. Oh, come on, Tim. More pictures cut to pieces, just like at the other place. No, it's not exactly the same, Tim. How's that? Now, look. Look here, the, the signatures. The movie star portraits were signed Paul. These uh, are signed Lyndon, to with Paul's real name. Well, he must have considered these up to the standard of his best work. Well, that lets Montague out as a suspect. Well, how do you figure that? Well, the paintings belong to Montague, don't they? Didn't that British female tell you as much? Yes, I look at terms of that perfectly frightful contract. Oh, hello. What do we hear? Oh, all done up in ribbons and bows. Looks like a Christmas present. Uh, but whose? Hmm. Yeah, it's a, another one of them paintings. Why, Tim, you have no soul. How can you look at this canvas and say it's only another painting? Now, look at it. The bold line, yet perfectly disciplined. The purity of the colors, solidity of the flesh tones. Mm, she looks a little skinny to me, but if you say it good. Why, this is a first-rate work of art by a major artist, Tim. I was hoping it'd be a clue. I promised Maggie I'd be home for dinner tonight, and here it is, three in the a.m. Say, Tim, mm. pick up that easel bring it in the other room. Now, let's see. Where's the best light? Ah, right here. Now, the painting. Ah. Yes, it's perfect. Now, help me move that sofa around here in front of it. Oh, there. Now, the stage is all set. Watch for. I want you to go round up all our suspects and bring them here. The late Paul Linden is about to have his first one-man show. I have an early call. What, what about me? Six and four. Oh, what is it, sir? Bring it up. Oh, oh, get out of the morning. Some oh, 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 move along in there. Well, Tim, good work. Now, if all of you good people will just be seated over here. I'm Joe. Is that a Linden? What? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, that's remarkable. Poor boy. Poor dear boy. Nuts. Okay, Mark, what's the deal? First of all, the medical examiner has completed his report on both homicides. On the basis of his report, the coroner's jury will probably return a verdict of murder by the hand of his wife, Dorothy, who subsequently took her own life. Oh, you mean, you mean the case is closed? Yes, except for one detail that still needs clearing up. And what is that, sir? The question of this painting. Inspector, where did you find that painting? Why do you ask that, Miss Stores? Well, I just wondered, that's all. Miss Stores, someone destroyed every painting in this house except this one. The person who destroyed the others might have good reason to be surprised that this one is still in existence. Well, if you must know, Paul promised me that painting for my birthday. He said he'd put it aside and nobody else would be allowed to see it until it was mine. If that painting belongs to anybody, it belongs to me. He owed me over three G's in back commission. Oh, you, you brute. Mark, believe me, that painting is mine. Promise me you won't let him have it. If you bring that painting into our house, I'll, I'll throw it in the ash can. It's mine? He gave it to me. Show it to me. Show me your name, Show me your name. Please, all of you. Inspector, if I may be allowed to speak. Please do, Mr. Montague. With all due deference, sir, the painting is not yours to dispose of. It's mine under the terms of my contract with the late Paul Linden. 
that I have a court order which I secured today in joining anyone but myself from removing any works of art from these premises. Well, dollface, I guess that ought to shut you up. Please, Harry. There was one other undamaged painting, Mr. Montague. The portrait of Miss Stores that you saw in Paul's studio. Now, why didn't you make any effort to gain possession of that? For well, that wretched daub. Well, you're a man of discernment, sir. Surely you can see the difference between that painting and this. This is a true Paul Linden. In fact, it's his masterpiece. Anything else he painted out here has been trash. I see. Mr. Montague, have you ever been in this house before? Well, that's rather an impertinent question. No, on the contrary, I consider it a very pertinent question. May I ask why? Because I don't agree with the medical examiner that Dorothy Linden committed suicide. I think she was stabbed to death by the same hand that murdered Paul. Mr. Montague, how could you know that all the other canvases Linden tainted out here were trash unless you had seen them intact? Well, I... Well, you see, I... I don't know how much money you invested in Paul Linden's career, Mr. Montague, but if what he was painting in New York was anywhere near as good as this... The Lindens in your possession were worth a small fortune. Not necessarily. The value of a painter's work is a very tricky matter. It can bring a top price one day and the next not be worth a red cent. Especially the work of a living painter. But Paul Linden is safely dead. He can't paint any more bad things. And the bad ones he did paint here have been destroyed. Your investment is perfectly safe. I resent your implication that I killed Paul Linden for the money involved. I killed the man that the artist might live. You yes, hear that? Yes, yes. yes and the Paul Linden I used to know would have hate me for what I did. I've rid the world of a money grubber and given it a great artist. That is my justification. And how do you justify the killing of Dorothy? Well, I neither justify nor reproach myself for that. It was merely necessary to the carrying out of my plan. He's getting a wild look in his eye, Inspector. Shall I put the handcuffs on him? I don't think that will be necessary, Tim. Thank you, sir. You're both a gentleman and a scholar. Shall we go? That closes the file on the case of the portrait in red. Well, send it out and have it framed. I'm certainly glad to see the end of it, Mark. Never in all my years on the force have I seen so many screwballs in one evening. Now, watch what you say, Tim. I may go into show business myself. Oh, is a, what do they call it, technical advisor? Certainly not. They want me to play the lead on a radio show called Mystery Theater. Faith in the jeepers. Have you no pride, man? And what's to become of me if there's another case like this and you're not there to protect me? Uh, oh, you're right, Tim. It wouldn't be fair to you. I guess I'll have to turn it down. You're a dialing man, Inspector. A dialing man. Phillips Milk of Magnesia and Bayer Aspirin have just brought you transcribed... Inspector Mark Saber in the case of the portrait in red on Mystery Theater. If your teeth have gradually lost their old-time whiteness and brightness, perhaps it's because you've changed your way of cleaning teeth in an effort to prevent tooth decay. So try using a dentifrice that not only helps prevent tooth-tooth decay, but also whitens and brightens your teeth, makes them really clean. And remember, no dentifrice cleans teeth like powder. Try Dr. Lyon's Tooth Powder. And if you don't agree that it gets your teeth cleaner than your present dentifrice, whitens and brightens them so your smile sparkles with all its old-time luster, return the package and your money will be refunded. Get either regular or ammoniated Dr. Lyon's Tooth Powder. Tonight's story, The Case of the Portrait in Red, was written by Robert Tolman. Inspector Sabre is played by Robert Carroll and Sergeant Maloney as James Westerfield. The orchestra is conducted by Clark Whipple. 
The names of all characters in tonight's dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons is purely coincidental. Listen again next week to Mystery Theater and the case of the Voice of Death. Roger Foster speaking. This program has come to you from New York. America is sold on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.